I posted a video on here about the teachers off-duty podcast controversy that created a lot of turmoil, individuals being upset within the teaching and disability community. And this is part two. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I do have a part one, but a quick recap. Teachers Off-Duty Podcast released a clip from their podcast that upset the teaching and disability community. The individuals involved each made a video on TikTok addressing the comments or the podcast or the statements mentioned in the specific video. The Teachers Off-Duty Podcast then asked certain individuals to come on the podcast and discuss the issue mentioned on the clip. And this is a quick disclaimer. My goal is just to bring education about this issue and an update. It is not to bring anything negative towards any of these creators. Since all of this has happened, the Teachers Off Duty podcast has not posted anything new regarding the situation. So on my first video, we looked at Miss Wooly and Fist's apology video. A lot of people were not happy with it. So she did end up posting another apology video and I will go ahead and play it here. Videos are sped up for time. Hi everyone. First of all, thank you to all of the members of the community who've put in the work, who've spoken to me and have helped me to educate me and learn over the past few days. I want to address my first apology because that wasn't it. That was not it. I realized that I was deflecting and that is not what you deserve. It made it seem like what I said was a miscommunication or like a slip of the tongue and not indicative of the ableist belief systems that I had not unpacked yet. I didn't understand why it was so hurtful when I said that a student had barely qualified on the podcast. I was perpetuating ableism and for that, I'm incredibly sorry and I will do better. From now on, you'll see a shift in my content as I continue to learn about the problem that is systemic ableism. I want to use this space to advocate for disabled people in a system that already puts them at a disadvantage and I was contributing to. So thank you. Thank you for calling me into this conversation and giving me the opportunity to learn. Thank you for the opportunity to grow as a person and an educator. I appreciate you all and I'm excited to learn alongside you. She then posted another video that was more informational. Hey everybody, today's the last day in our school for teachers. And I thought, what better way to kick off the summer than by doing some more learning. In the 2020-2021 school year, 14.5% of students were special education students. And about 66% of those students, ages 6 to 21, and also 5-year-olds in kindergarten, spend about 80% of their time or more in a regular education classroom. I'm an inclusion teacher, and my classroom is one of those. So I wanted to look for ways of how to better support my students with IEPs. One of the ways that I like to do that in my classroom is with fidget toys. As an adult currently going through the process of being diagnosed with ADHD, I've noticed myself fidgeting my entire life. I would sit in staff meetings and flip this ring back and forth in my fingers, and I didn't relate to neurodiversity until I started therapy. It was like allowing my hands to do something while my mind could focus on other things. Fidget toys do that for my students. As teachers, this is just one way that we can support our students with disabilities. So she posted a second video talking about supporting students. I'm not going to play it, but you are more than welcome to check out her page and watch it for yourself. After watching her second apology video and reading the comments in her community, a lot of people were much happier with this apology. It takes a lot of courage, self-awareness, self-reflection to admit when we have something going on, such as a bias towards a specific community. So I will give her much respect that she addressed the second apology, she addressed people's concerns, and I think she is moving in a positive direction to build the bridge between the disability community and um, the Teachers Off podcast community. Since the apology video that Devin originally did, he did not post any other apology, and he has just been continually posting his regular comedy skits on his page. The creator, Gabe, did post an apology, but he said he did it on his live. And since then, there has been no other apology video on his page. So Mr. Williams Pre-K did post a video where he talks about taking a mental health break, and I will go ahead and play it for you. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump on for real quick and first and foremost say thank you to everyone who has reached out and the hundreds and hundreds of messages I've gotten call me into this conversation. I've gotten a ton of messages from parents and from teachers, but more importantly, they've come from people that are in the disabilities community. Not only be sure with me resources and, and tools, they've also sent me deeply personal stories about what it was like growing up either with or without an IEP and what's been like to operate in the world as someone with a disability. It is not your job as someone with a marginalized status to educate me, but the fact that you've been willing to do that, I'm humbled and thank you so much. You've helped me understand that just because I wasn't the one in the podcast to make those ableistic comments does not mean that my complacency wasn't just as impactful. Not speaking out then is problem enough, but I also think to tell our editors or our producers or the owner of the podcast to edit that out, and that is a huge issue. I know both on the podcast and on my TikTok, I've shared my own personal story of what it was like to grow up with an IEP and be dyslexic and not read until third or fourth grade. I've also documented my journey of being later in life diagnosed with ADHD, anxiety, and a binge eating disorder. I deeply harmed a community that I'm a member of, and that is not okay. Because y'all called me and told me if this was a sexist, a racist, a homophobic comment, I would have said something. And I have to ask myself, why did I not do that here? The work I have to do goes well beyond the podcast. I have years of internalized ableism and trauma that I need to work on and I need to address. I pride myself on being an advocate, and I can't say that about myself right now. And if I ever once again, I need to stop and reflect on my own biases. Like I said, y'all sent me amazing resources and I need to stop and take some time to go through those. I also need to work with my therapist. I need to work with people that are in the disability community and I need to work with myself. I don't know how long this break is going to be. It's going to be a little bit more than a pre-K pause. But in the meantime, thank you so much for holding me accountable for my actions or lack of actions. I'll return when I know that I can come back and be better for you all. Hopefully I will see you all very soon. So to be honest, being on social media can definitely take a toll on our mental health, especially with all of the situation that had just happened. So if he needs to have a mental health break, I completely respect that he is modeling and being aware of his own mental health struggles or just a need that he may have. So sometimes it's great to take a time to reflect, 
reset and be away from social media. So I hope that his mental health break um, serves him well. So now that we have covered that side, there has been quite a bit of controversy now going on within the disability community. Creator Laura Hales um, was asked to go on the Teachers Off Duty podcast. And so she kind of discussed how her experience was and what her thoughts were regarding that situation. So I will play her video. When I was recording the podcast episode with the Teachers Off Duty podcast, it was more about a lack of accessibility to services within the public education system. That's an important thing to discuss, but I'm here to hold you accountable. So I asked them, is it okay if I switch gears here and address the video directly? They were very eager and said, absolutely. On behalf of parents of children with disabilities who fight every day to survive. And I mean survive. They had to see this video on behalf of fellow teachers who now have to work so much harder, the good ones, to gain any kind of trust with those parents. And more importantly, on behalf of those students who feel like they're ruining your day, they hate themselves more than you ever could. So many of our kids, when they look in the mirror, they hate what they see. They live a life where they feel like they are constantly, in spite of their best efforts, failing everybody all the time. Comments like these, environments like these, laughing and normalizing jokes like these lead directly to the horrific statistics of disabled individuals who end up completing. You know what? I'm not messing around with these people, y'all. Once I gave them the business and made sure they listened and listened well, I moved on to, now let's change this. Hope that helps. Another creator on this app then created their own video addressing some of the things that Laura had talked about on the Teachers Off Duty podcast. So I will go ahead and play her video for you. We need to talk about the importance of elevating disabled people, especially disabled adults and ones that have experience in the education system in this conversation regarding the Teachers Off Duty podcast and all of what it represents within education. If we ignore the voices of disabled educators and disabled people in those conversations and instead elevate the voices of advocates and parents, we have situations like this. Ask Teachers Off Duty podcast, are you willing to help? That is Laura, and I will put her username down here, but she is a autism advocate and mother of autistic children who went on the follow-up podcast episode with the Off Duty Teachers podcast to discuss what they said literally within the same week. After all of that, went on to then use that as a way to publicize her third children's book, ask the Off Duty Teacher podcast host for help in procuring monetization and support for this application or whatever, which ultimately I don't think it's a bad thing, but there's a huge problem when you decide that instead of advocating on your platform that you now gained followers from for getting to go on a podcast, instead of elevating the voices of disabled people um, or including them within your content, that you went straight to, oh, let me advertise a product that I will make money off of. You can make things and you can encourage autism acceptance and acceptance of stimming and that all behavior is communication. All things that I agree with deeply on a personal level and talk about all the time on my platform, you can do that without personally making money off of it. And I know that this is going to make people angry that I'm saying this. I know. But it is gross. It is gross that you are using this moment of fame or focus or whatever to instead of elevating the voices of disabled people and featuring disabled people, you are trying to find a way to monetize it for yourself absolutely despicable. I get very anxious when there's a lot of interaction with something that I post on here. Last week, after posting the video about the Off Duty Teachers podcast, I was overwhelmed with the amount of messages that I got, the amount of interaction that was happening on that video, the people on the podcast reaching out to me to talk with me. Um, ultimately, I believe that all of that hopefully will lead to some good. But in the moment, it was very, very overwhelming. Then Laura responded and her response was definitely not something that I expected. So I will go ahead and play the last video. So a couple things. Um, one is that I'm a list and I've always known that and I'm constantly in check with myself. And two is that I'm learning that I can't trust myself to speak on anything. And anything I say or do right now is hurting the community that I'm trying so hard to advocate for. And that's a big problem. So I think it's best for a while that I collaborate with other disabled content creators and big and small and post their videos to my page with their permission, of course, and tagging them and such. Because that's what I was wanting to do is amplify their voices. And what a better time than now when I can't trust myself. That pretty much sums up everything I have seen so far. I haven't heard anything new in the last few days. I do want to point out that I think it's amazing that different creators can get on this app, share their perspective, call out things they're seeing, and it's a great way for us to communicate. However, we also have to be aware of our mental health and where we are at each day on social media because sometimes it can be a lot. I also have been watching very closely the Teachers Off Duty podcast just to see if they have released the full video yet where they discuss some of the things mentioned in the original video. So I am definitely going to be reviewing that video when it comes out and I will make a part three. So make sure you are liking and subscribing so you don't miss that third part. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, views in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.